Good day and welcome to the ClearSign Technologies second quarter 2020 conference call. All participants will be in listen-only mode. Should you need assistance, please signal a conference specialist by pressing the star key followed by zero. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchstone phone. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. Please note this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to Matthew Selinger, Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Good afternoon and thank you, operator. Welcome everyone to the ClearSign Technologies Corporation second quarter 2020 results conference call. During this conference call, the company will make forward-looking statements. Any statement that is not a statement of historical fact is a forward-looking statement. This includes remarks about the company's projections, expectations, plans, beliefs, and prospects. These statements are based on judgments and analysis as of the date of this conference call and are subject to numerous important risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those described in the forward-looking statements. The risks and uncertainties associated with the forward-looking statements made in this conference call include, but are not limited to, whether field testing and sales of ClearSign products will be successfully completed, whether ClearSign will be successful in expanding the market for its products, and other risks that are described in ClearSign's public periodic filings with the SEC, including a discussion in the risk factors section of the 2019 annual report on Form 10-K. Except as required by law, ClearSign assumes no responsibility to update these forward-looking statements to reflect future events or actual outcomes and is not intended to do so. On the call with me today are Jim Deller, ClearSign's President and Chief Executive Officer, and Brian Fike, ClearSign's Chief Financial Officer. At this point, I'd like to turn the call to Brian Fike. Please go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you to everyone for joining us here today. Our financial results were included on the Form 10-Q that the company filed with the SEC on August 14th. The cash burn for the quarter ended June 30th of 2020 was $1.4 million, compared to $2.1 million in the same period of 2019. This decline reflects the reductions made to operating expenses and is representative of the changes made in the company's operations since the first quarter of last year. The increased efficiency is directly attributable to the systematic focus on prioritized projects, selective use of outsourced consultants, and a more rigorous project planning and budgeting approval process. Our cash and investment resources were about $5.7 million at the end of the second quarter of 2020, compared to $7.5 million at the end of the first quarter of 2020. Shares outstanding on June 30th of 2020 were 26 million 731,261. On August 24th of 2020, we closed a secondary offering pursuant to which we issued 2,587,500 shares of common stock for gross proceeds of approximately $5,175,000 or $2 per share. This bolsters the company's cash position, which we believe will enable us to bring our current product developments to market. Additionally, Clear SPV LLC, our largest shareholder, waived its right to participate in the secondary offering in exchange for a right to purchase approximately 654,000 shares of the company's unregistered common stock at a price of $2 per share. This purchase right will expire on September 30th of 2020, if not exercised. During the second quarter, we received approximately $250,000 in funds from a PPP loan, which we anticipate will be forgiven in the next few months. It is important to note that with our quarter ending balances, plus the funds raised through the secondary offering, we have sufficient working capital available to carry us comfortably into 2022, and that is without including revenues from any other sources. With that, I would like to turn the call over to our Chief Executive Officer, Jim Deller. Please go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Brian, for that financial overview. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 2020 Q2 conference call. This has been a very busy and productive few months, to say the least. At the time of the last call, we had just announced the receipt of the purchase order for burners to be supplied to the ExxonMobil Baytown refinery, 
and a lot has been achieved since then. The work on this process burn order is going well, and I will give an in-depth update on this progress and the continuing development of this technology shortly. We also recently announced on August the 12th the formation of our major collaborative alliance with the global combustion equipment company, Zico. We expect this relationship to be transformational for ClearSign. I'll give more detail on why this is so and what this agreement means for ClearSign a little later. Additionally, we are continuing to progress the commercialization of our sensor technology and anticipate being able to announce the first industrial installations of this new and novel technology very shortly. I'm also happy to report that we have had a breakthrough and are able to get back on the ground in China to progress our China boiler burner projects. I will go into more detail about our program for commercialization there. Before getting in, into the more detailed update, I want to commend the ClearSign employees for driving the progress of our work despite the inconvenience and restrictions required due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have made great strides developing and expanding our technology in all product lines, process burners, boiler burners, flares and sensors, in addition to supporting our customers on site and optimizing plans with our vendors and subcontractors. When looking at the ClearSign process burner business, the ExxonMobil order and the collaborative alliance we have with Zico are heavily intertwined. For ExxonMobil to place the burner order with ClearSign, we were required to be able to provide full-scale burner testing, and also for the long term to provide a strategic and coherent plan to enable the provision of burners on a global scale, as well as the order execution credentials and resources to meet the anticipated future requirements of ExxonMobil. We have been developing our collaborative partnership methodically since the middle of last year, and Zico agreed in good faith to commit the testing requirements of ExxonMobil during this process, as ExxonMobil agreed to progress the engagement with ClearSign with the understanding that we will be aligned with Zico in the future to meet their anticipated NOx reduction needs. You will appreciate that to reach this point has required a lot of trust and good faith on the part of both ExxonMobil and Zico, as both have invested time and resources into our forward-looking proposal, namely for the adoption of novel and groundbreaking technology on the part of ExxonMobil and for a unique strategic business opportunity with ClearSign for Zico. We are extremely grateful for all involved at both companies for their support and vision for what is possible. I want to take a few minutes to talk in more detail about Zico and why we are so optimistic about the future opportunities that our collaboration with them will provide. Zico is a leading global industrial combustion equipment company that has over a thousand employees and over 25 global locations. Of particular relevance to ClearSign are their large business operations and manufacturing capabilities in the United States, Europe, and China, in addition to their other significant manufacturing and engineering capabilities in India, Mexico, and Korea. The Zico business has developed rapidly and organically through the development of technology and its highly skilled staff as well as the strategic development of resources to meet the developing needs of the global combustion equipment marketplace. Zico has a portfolio of globally recognized and technologically advanced products and is considered a household name throughout the world for finding and petrochemical companies. For ClearSign, this puts our ClearSign core process burners on the approved vendor list essentially the speed dial of the world's largest and best known companies in the industry. It is also worthy to note that Zico is also a major player in other verticals such as boiler burners, flares, vapor recovery, and thermal oxidizers. The Zico head office and its research and testing facility is based in the city of Broken Arrow. That's on the south side of Tulsa. Regarding practicalities for our future business together, that is about 15 minutes drive from the ClearSign Tulsa, Oklahoma office. 
The bottom line is that we believe that Zico is the perfect partner for ClearSign and the development of our future strategic plans, its business approach, is creative and productive. Its global recognition and respect by the world's major customers is unquestioned, and it has established resources to, to deliver combustion equipment to meet the industry's needs around the world. For ClearSign, we expect this collaboration to provide a very powerful channel to the global market for our process burner technology. And we believe that it will immediately make our technology viable and available for all process burner customers. For Zico, we believe this collaboration and the adoption of the ClearSign core technology will provide a unique performance, high performance product line with the ability to deliver immense value to, to customers compared to their other stringent emissions reduction alternatives, predominantly SCRs. And we believe this collaboration will reinforce Zico as a true technical leader and environmental solutions provider in the industrial process burner industry. For obvious reasons, a lot of the details of our collaborative agreement with Zico are confidential. But I can give a high level overview of the key elements. The technology roadmap is that we will first bring to market the process burn design we have, our Soltwix on mobile, then develop the system designs for other heater types and process needs, and ultimately other verticals as the demand and market readiness for the new technology develops. For individual sales and orders, the day-to-day -day operations, both ClearSign and Zico will promote our joint technology and develop sales opportunities. Regarding our respective contributions to the ClearSign Core Burner Order Fulfillment, ClearSign will provide the ClearSign Core intellectual property, so a licensing-like component, and the specialist process engineering and critical ceramic elements. And Zico will provide their world-class burner construction, engineering, and project management, the general procurement and logistics activities, and host the customer performance testing which is a part of nearly every process burner order. ClearSign will assist with the burner configuration and design, and will provide engineering and commercial review at key milestones in the order execution. Our agreement with Zika requires the development of our mutual business in stages, especially the development of new product lines and expansion into new verticals. The first milestone is approaching in the very near future as the agreement is contingent on the successful demonstration of the ClearSign core technology, which brings us back to the ExxonMobil burn supply project for its Baytown refinery. The project for ExxonMobil is progressing well. In fact, from a strategic business development perspective, it has exceeded our expectations. What I mean by that, is that the basic optimization and detailed design of the burners is, is on schedule and the burners are manufactured to the point that they are ready for performance testing. The Zico test facility is set up and all parties are aligned to proceed with its fired optimization and demonstration process. From a, from a strategic perspective, ExxonMobil has asked us to not only validate the burn operation over the operating requirements for the destination heater, but for all their heaters in this major and complex refinery under every known environment, including operational upsets, we believe referencing post Hurricane Harvey. While this extreme demand may seem burdensome, the bigger picture is that this project is being used to validate clear sign technology for extensive future emissions attainment plans and our engineers have knocked it out of the park. The refined burner we have today is notably different from the model we had even at the start of this year. We still retain the instant light off and an unwavering focus on ensuring the burner is easy to implement, to maintain, and for refinery operators to use. But through the optimization of the aerodynamics of the fuel and the air delivery components, we have significantly expanded the operating range of the burners to enable products capable of virtually every service in a modern refinery. You will have noticed that burner testing features 
prominently in the communications we have released regarding our strategic partnership and the execution of burner orders. Production burner testing is a routine part of the industrial burner supply business. Virtually every process burner supplied to the refining and petrochemical customers has some degree of customization because every heater and its operating requirements are unique. In the process of fulfilling custom orders, after the detailed design of the burner is complete, it is normal to build typically one, but sometimes multiple burners for the customer's specific design and to install them in a test furnace. These test furnaces are designed so that they enable the burners to be fired at the full rate in an environment representative of the conditions in the customer's furnace. This allows the burners to be optimized and proven to meet the specific operating conditions and emissions performance required by the customer. From an insider perspective, burner tests typically have two possible outcomes. Either everything is great, or the engineers get to go back to work and the final demonstration is repeated at a later date. But managing and planning for, a, for burner testing is a very normal part of the burner project manager's life. I emphasize that this is not unique to ClearSign. This is a feature of the process burner industry. Top tier burner manufacturers have several different test furnaces enabling multiple project related tests to be run at one time and representing many different heater configurations. As an aside, of all the burner ma manufacturers, Zico has the most extensive test facility for this function and of course for new product development. As part of the burner order, the test points to be de demonstrated are agreed upon and aligned with the performance guarantees of the burners. This is the case for our ExxonMobil burners a wide-ranging test procedure has been agreed to by all parties involved, and we look forward to completing this very important next stage of this project. While we are obviously focused on the successful completion of our project for ExxonMobil, we do have other opportunities in the pipeline. I cannot go into details, but they include other global major refiners and household names. Another positive market indication is that since our collaboration with Zico was announced, we have received a lot more general inquiries regarding what we offer from within the industry, a sign we take as being very encouraging. Switching now to our flare product line, on May 14th, we announced a multi-flare order through our equipment manufacturing partner, Ashcore, and International Combustion and Controls, a division of our channel partner, California Boiler. The first of these flares is installed and running in California, and the remaining three are in progress. The flares for this order are a novel design of a smaller scale than the previous flares we have installed. I want to thank and recognize our Chief Technology Officer, Donald Kendrick, for bringing this new extension to our flare product line into commercial operation. The customer feedback we have received indicates that this is a sector of the market that could provide notable follow-on demand. I have nothing to add at this time, but the indications are encouraging. Our ClearSign I on-off sensing technology is proceeding as planned. At this time, we are talking to prospective customers to arrange some first adopter sites to give the industry an opportunity to test the product and see the market, and also for us to ensure we have not only the technology perfected, but also the other necessary details such as packaging, installation instructions, customer connection points, etc. In parallel with this, we are running the final product for a battery of tests in our R&D facility in Seattle to simulate the worst conditions the sensors will ever experience in their normal operation. The intentions of this are twofold. Firstly, to ensure that the design is truly robust. And secondly, to provide materials and data to give confidence to our customers that what we offer is truly a long-term, low-maintenance solution to replace their existing unreliable and high-maintenance pilot plane detectors. The evolution of the ClearSign Eye Flame Sensor has included development of our suppliers, and incorporating their input into both the hardware and the electronics. 
The sensors will be sold and delivered as a clear sound product. The sensor is designed to fit onto pilots provided by any burn manufacturer. And while we initially expect the sales to develop in the United States, we anticipate that this will become a worldwide product. The sensor is also being promoted primarily to the end user refining and petrochemical customers with the intent that this will lead to sales in retrofit. The flame board sensors on existing burners and also that in time, clear sunlight sensors will be written into their specifications for new burners, leading to sales by clear sign directly to the manufacturer of the burners for those particular orders. In our last call, we mentioned that the fire tube boiler burner has been developed into a single piece, easy to install and user-friendly design. Additionally, this new design was created and has maintained the unique NOx performance of the original prototype configuration. Since the last call, we have continued to work on our boiler burner to ensure that we have all design details worked out for the Chinese market in anticipation of getting back on the ground there to continue our performance testing and type testing, the precursors of having a product formally approved for sales in China. This year, the coronavirus has delayed travel, and this has been especially difficult regarding China. The Chinese government is at present not allowing US residents, even with existing visas, to enter China, although they are allowing a few very special visas for executives of Chinese-based companies. We have recently had a breakthrough in this regard. Through our extensive Chinese diplomatic connections, we have been able to get a single visa for the president of our subsidiary, ClearSign Asia Limited, and he will be returning to China during the period the visa specifies in late September. On his arrival, there will be a 14-day isolated quarantine period before being able to return to work on the ground. In anticipation of this, we have arranged for remote video conferencing to connect our Seattle-based research and development team with ClearSign Asia's president and our consultants and contractors in China. And in this manner, we plan to restart what we anticipate will be the commercial proving and validation of our fire tube boiler burner technology in China. Following the Chinese certification of our fire tube boiler burner technology, we plan to set up a collaborative venture to enable the commercialization of our technology there and to extend the burner design to provide a full range of products. We will keep you informed as we make material developments in this regard. While in China, we will, of course, also be meeting our associates and, and contacts at the Beijing District Heating to arrange for the continuation of our water tube boiler pro project, along with reaffirming the other business relationships we have there. While we have maintained frequent contact with them from the USA, being able to get back on the ground in person is a very important step in getting back to full progress for us. To summarize, we are very encouraged that we have completed the ecosystem for the commercialization of our process burner technology by securing a collaboration with what we believe can only be described as the perfect global partner. In this regard, the agreement with Zico completes a very significant milestone in our commercialization strategy and the tangible development of our process burner business that we laid out in mid-2019. We are very optimistic as we get into the heart of our burner testing process for ExxonMobil at our new partner's test facility and we will be ecstatic when we complete this phase of the project and can confirm to our customers, new partner, and the market at large that clear sign burners are proven to be ready for wide-scale industrial deployment. We are looking forward to the installation of our first burner pilot sensors, getting performance and ease of use feedback from customers and moving into the formal launch of this initial clear sign I product. The move to start back up and re-engage our border burner demonstrations in China is already in motion 
and will be solidly underway as soon as we have feet on the ground and the ability to coordinate the much anticipated final installation, operation, and certification of our 5G boiler product. As always, we will keep you, our investors, informed as these and other developments occur. Personally, I look forward to updating you with news in the future and thank you for your interest in ClearSign. That concludes my prepared remarks today. Operator, please open up the lines for questions. And we will now begin the question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. If you're using a speaker phone, please pick up your handset before pressing the key. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. And at this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble the roster. And our first question today will come from Jeff Vineglass. Please go ahead. Hey, Jim. Uh, I want to make sure you can hear me. Hi, Jeff. Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I have two questions. So uh, the first one is, when you announced the partnership with Zico, the market more or less just yawned at that. But, it, you know, from your standpoint, with your remarks today, it seems you, you, you see it as a bigger deal than, I guess, how the share price reflected it. Um, who's right? I'm quite confident that I am right in this case. You know, the, you know, if we compare the two, we had a, a very huge recognition when Exxon placed the purchase order for the burners on ClearSign. And as you said, the, uh, the impact of announcing our, our collaboration with Zika was much more muted. From my perspective, looking at the strategic development of the company, you know, whilst I, I will never uh, understate the importance of Exxon, I really believe that the collaboration with Zico is the fundamental milestone that we have been seeking uh, really since the middle of last year. This really is the, right, the gateway to getting us commercial. In, to, you know, maybe, maybe in simple terms, you, you know, but, if we've got a recipe for great bread and we've baked a couple of loaves ourselves to, uh, to sell, uh, an arrangement with Zico is like forming an agreement with a, a great global bakery chain. It's, it, it's, it's truly getting our, our process burners into the global market. And I, I can't understate how fundamental that is for clear signs. So I, yes, the response was muted, but I, I really believe the results will be evident in the, uh, the future business of clear sign. Good. All right. Well, thank you. Um, real, real quick, one other question. Um, regarding your comments regarding Exxon and the, the testing of the burners, um, you mentioned that they had expanded some of the requirements. I may be putting words in your mouth, but does the expansion of those requirements mean that this is more than just, again, I'm putting words in your mouth, more than just looking for it for Baytown, but they want to find out if this works across their entire heater fleet? I, mean, I, have, I have to be careful speaking for for Exxon, but yes, it, it it was quite clear working with their project team as these specifications developed, they were looking much more, much more widely than the operating requirements for this single destination heater. Uh, also, just you know, putting the pieces together, when we look at the hours and the in fact, the years that Exxon have been assessing the ClearSign technology and the effort that they have been or they have put into this project and continue to put into this project, we really believe that this is a part of something much bigger with Exxon. And you know, knowing that we have the, uh, the central en engineering division of Exxon involved rather than just the Baytown refinery, you know, I, as again, I, I, I can't make statements for Exxon, but from, from my perspective, all, all the parts are there for this to be the, 
and we truly believe it to be the the uh, testing of Exxon of our burners for a a much wider use globally. Gotcha, gotcha, exciting. Okay, thank you. And I'm sorry, one last piece. I think I missed. When did you say Manny was going to be able to get back into China? So his his visa, they have a you know, a, a, a window. It's the, it's the second half of this month. And okay. then on landing, he yeah he has to go into a quarantine on landing. That's the same for everyone. So we actually expect okay, him to be on the ground around mid around mid October. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. And our next question will come from Robert Kekseg with Las Colinas Capital Management. Please go ahead. Hi, Jim. Good to talk to you again. Um, Hi, Bob. Something I've, been, right, something I've been thinking about for a while. Could you give us some sort of a, a measuring stick on the durability of the material that you're using uh, as far as maybe the amount of heat or the amount of time that it's used? Uh, in other words, is it is it capable of withstanding, you know, temperatures far beyond the temperatures that are – used in these heaters just just looking at the at the refinery heaters could you could you kind of talk about a little bit maybe numerically um as far as far as durability and the heat temperatures and stuff i can bother you i can't really for so you've got two two products that 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 would that would be applicable to and i'll i'll address them both so the First is the sensor technology. You know, the, the, the incumbent probes, the ionization probe, actually stick into the flame and really do not last. They, they are very, uh, or have a very high maintenance need. They burn up and they're really prone to losing their, their electrical connectivity. The clear cyanide sensor, it works through a different technology but the surface of the metal components closest to the flame, we've, we have measured between 300 and 350 degrees with, on, on a material that's actually able to withstand you know, 15, 1600 degrees. So there is a, a very great safety margin on, on that product. So we really believe that we have a, a very, very durable design of clear sign I. The, I think the other technology that I may be referring to to the burners, but our, our experience, we, we have the ceramic components that we're using in service now for you know, several years. On, on one installation in particular in, in California, the, the heater is actually on a, a daily cycle. So rather than starting the unit up and leaving it to operate at a consistent load, which really doesn't stress ceramic material that much, that heater is cycled off during night and then brought back on every single day. And so it's, it's probably received 10 lifetimes worth of work in, in a year. And we did not see a single failure of any of the ceramic components on that heater. Uh, we have sourced the best material available and we we really believe that we have the right material for the job. And, and I guess I guess the other question is, um, when you do these tests and so forth, um, it, are, are there like hundreds of hours, I guess, of testing or operating burners already with, with the ceramics and, and your whole your whole design? Um, I, I guess I'm just kind of thinking of the drama of this of this test uh, upcoming test and then the installation afterward um you could just give us an idea of what kind of uh what kind of duration have the burners already experienced uh, the ones you're talking about for the refineries i'll try a, i mean the duration we've experienced at this point has been in in the other installations just as i, as I referred to referencing the other uh, the burner in California and, and particularly the cycling. The testing that we have coming up 
uh, with Zico for the Exxon project. The data that we are monitoring and validating there is the emissions performance, the you know, the flame length that the burners just turn up and down and operate just like a regular burner. Uh, basically, the refinery is looking to make sure that the burners do the job for them. Uh, up to, obviously, of course, to make the emissions guarantees, but also to basically be able to operate and be driven like they need uh, to make their heat of work. That is the fundamental requirement of the test. It's, it's, it's basically making sure the burners do meet the guarantees that were made, made for the burner performance. Over time, you know, we will see a longevity of the materials, but that will not be evident from the burner testing. The burner testing is a much shorter duration. In fact, the formal witness testing for these burners, when we get to that point, and I'll, I'll, I'll preface that by saying that the testing period includes the pre-run and the optimization. So it's basically like a uh, preparing a play and then going through the dress rehearsal. The actual witness testing is the final performance. But that final per uh, performance part when we get there is anticipated to last about a week in total. But from that point, when the burners get installed into the refinery, they'll bring the heater up to rate as fast as their turnaround schedule allows. And you know, it, it will be evident, you know, certainly within weeks, that the burners are doing what they are what what they are supposed to do. We get that data quite quickly, and then the materials will be proven out, you know, truly over, over years because the the equipment is selected to you know last at least from one shutdown to another, and we expect it to not uh, to last longer than that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Bob. And once again, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star then one. And our next question will come from Robert Harvey. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Um, do you address, uh, or I guess have products for the process burner, the boiler burner, uh, sensor, and flare markets? Uh, could you uh, just spend a few minutes talking about the largest addressable market within each of those four? component areas? I can. I mean, it, it's actually a very interesting question. I mean, the, uh, the first to mind is, or, or, and, the, and the first thing on our minds at this point is the process burner business, especially following the uh, collaboration agreement with Zico and the fact that that is so close to truly being launched. You know, right now we have the, if you like, the basic burner design as we've sold to Exxon, um, ready to go and, and being quoted. But that will expand into the other processes throughout oil refineries, which is a, a huge development. But then beyond that, it will also be expanded into the petrochemical plants, uh, which include the ethylene furnaces. So, so the potential there is absolutely enormous. But thinking beyond that, the, uh, the boiler burners, and we're predominantly focused in China, and I think on, on a previous call we referenced the market there, but we believe there's about 350,000 boilers that are due to be retrofit in China over the next 10 years to come into compliance with the latest emission requirements from the Chinese government. So, you know, obviously you don't have a crystal ball to say exactly which of those markets will develop the most, but those two Either one of those two could be you know, bigger than the other, but both have absolutely huge potential. But then looking even f further afield, we have the, you know, the on-off sensor, which has a, 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 an extremely high volume market. I mean, the burner pilots are in burners all around the world. It's not restricted to emissions type areas where there is, is, is compliance need and the burners need to be retrofit. This is a, a product that is applicable to every burner that has a, a pilot with a flame that has to be proven to be in place. 
globally, so throughout the US, but throughout every country. So the volume there is huge, but also on in our clear sign eye and the sensor product line, you know, we have a contract for the aerospace industry, and we can't name the partner, to develop that in, into the aerospace business. This is a very different application. It's, it's quite technical. There's a lot more work to be done, but the, uh, the potential market from that may actually dwarf the others. It could be absolutely enormous, but it is further out. Uh, the Flares is, is an immediate product we have. Uh, 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 the Flares is obviously significant for us, but I, uh, it doesn't have the same monumental potential that the other three product lines do. But as I think through this, really to me, the essence of the question isn't which is the biggest, because each of these three uh, truly has a, an enormous potential for ClearSign. In terms of focus, you know, we want, it, it's, it's about what can we bring to market first. And having got the agreement with Zico and got that product truly into a commercial form where we're actively quoting it. I think the timing is the real question and, and the process burners are at the head of the line and will be the first to market. But that doesn't diminish our excitement for, for, for the other businesses. It just means that they're a little bit further along into the future before we truly expect to have them fully commercialized and, and with a partner to make the, uh, the most of their, their potential. Thank you. So I'm not sure if that's a question for you, but it, it, it's a, absolutely, there's three absolutely huge markets there. And, and, and ultimately when we look back on this to try and project which of those three will actually be the biggest is, is very difficult to discern. They all have enormous potential. Well, you must be encouraged that Exxon has asked uh, for the burner to be tested in a white, I guess, more thoroughly or more broadly, or comprehensively tested for potential wider number of uh, heater installations. Um, so, and I, I guess you mean that, from what you said, that means that they might be installable in the uh, petrochemical plants as well as the refineries. Um, are you allowed to comment on the time frame for the testing uh, when the test will be complete? Is this a first half of 2021 or you know, what, are you allowed to say anything about what your testing schedule is and when you might have results? I can give some approximate dates. I mean, point to be honest, we're not totally in control of the dates, especially the the actual in installation because that will be done and controlled by Exxon and you know when they choose to bring their heater down for a turnaround does depend on the on the operating requirements of the refinery and the other turnaround projects that they have um, so I'd, I really say that as a caveat at this time our expectation is that the burners will be installed in Q1 of next year and brought up and running in that time frame. Uh, regarding the testing at the Zico facility, obviously to have them down there and installed in, in Q1 of next year, uh, they will be tested in time for us to you know, go through a, a final cleanup packaging and shipping to the job site for installation in that time frame. So, so from that, without giving exact dates, you can kind of envision that the, uh, the testing is on our on our immediate horizon. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And this will conclude our question and answer session. I'd like to turn the conference back over to Jim Deller for any closing remarks. Thank you, Operator. And thank you everyone for attending this call today. Uh, this concludes the ClearSign Technologies second quarter 2020 results conference call. We, we appreciate your interest in ClearSign and look forward to updating you on our business progress. The conference is now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect your lines at this time. Everyone else has left the call.